Hi everyone and welcome back to another AP Calculus video. In this video we're going to talk about a special circumstance or a special type of curve um, that creates, when you revolve it around the x-axis, it creates this shape that mathematicians refer to as Gabriel's horn. Now the reason it's called Gabriel's horn is because in biblical times the angel Gabriel is said to announce the end times and so he does so by blowing a large trumpet um, and this right here appears to look like Gabriel's horn. And so if you do some Googling and Google, you know, Angel Gabriel, and there are statues in uh, the Christian culture, in particular the European Christian culture all over, um, you know, commemorating that, that part of the Bible. And he's always holding a horn to blast out and announce those end times. So of course, mathematicians coming from that European Christian uh, background would name things uh, after the things that they know. And so here we have, this is what Gabriel's horn looks like. And specifically, Gabriel's horn is found by taking the function 1 over x and revolving it around the x-axis. So we're going to talk a little bit about this function because it has some special properties in that when we find the volume, we're going to find that the volume of this particular function does exist, as we know that sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. Sometimes when we try to integrate from uh, over an infinite amount of length, uh, we get, you know, infinity and we know that that integral diverges and the volume is infinite. But in this case, we are going to get a convergent um, integral spoiler. But then we're also going to talk about another topic that's not necessarily on the AP exam, and that's surface area. And we're going to see what happens when we try to find the surface area. So one of the things I want you to ponder throughout this video is that as we find this volume, if the volume exists, if the volume integral converges to some value, does that mean that the surface area also must converge? So there's the question. So let's go ahead, let's find our volume because that is a topic that's on our exam. So I'm going to revolve this curve and I'm going to create a circular cross section. So remember when we find the volume of any, any shape, uh, it's always the integral from A to B, and then it's the area cross-section. So that area cross-section could be any shape. It could be triangular, semicircular. It could be a square. It could be a rectangle. It could be a lot of things. Here, it is going to be a circle because as we revolve, we create a circular cross-section. So my area function, I'm always going to write that down, is pi r squared, with r being the function. So remember, r always goes from the axis of revolution to the curve. So this is r. It's this function value. Um, also, I'm going to note that this is a dx setup because that cross-section is perpendicular to the x-axis. So here we go. Let's go ahead and set up our integral and let's find the volume. So here we go. I'm going to go from 1 to infinity. I'm going to have pi r squared dx. So there's my setup. Now I'm going to express it as a limit as b approaches infinity. 1 to b, pi and I'll write it as 1 over x squared. I'm going to pull the pi out, actually. Let's put it on the outside. That makes it a little easier to integrate this. So now when I integrate, I'm going to consider this as x to the negative 2. So uh, when I integrate, I'm going to add 1 and then divide. So I end up getting the limit as b approaches infinity. I'll have pi on the outside. Um, x to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 from 1 to b. I'm going to move that negative exponent down here in just a moment. So I'll have negative 1 over x. Now I'm going to plug in my limits of integration. The limit as b approaches infinity, I'll have pi negative 1 over b minus negative 1 over 1. Minus a minus turns to a plus, and this goes to 0. So I'm going to have pi times 1. Don't forget the pi. So this integral converges to pi. So the volume of Gabriel's horn is pi. It's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, pretty cool. So we know that the volume exists. You know, spoilers, I told you that it was going to converge. And it converges to pi. But now let's talk about the surface area. So the surface area would be the wrapper, right? So if I were to put a wrapper around this, what would the area of that wrapper be? So to find the surface area, and remember, this is not a topic that is required for the AP exam. It's not something that, you know, is necessarily required in this course. Um, in my class, we won't be testing on surface area. This is just kind of a fun little extra piece. So, you know, just kind of watch and take it in. But the surface area can be found by evaluating this integral, 2 pi r, that's the circumference, times the arc length. 
And if we integrate that, then we end up getting that surface area. So that's the general form. And if you can remember how to find arc length, arc length is found by integrating from A to B. Now, this is a topic on the exam. 1 plus dy dx squared, or dx dy if it's a dy setup, and you would use the y values. So remember, you can, if you have an equation that's in terms of y, that's x equals some, some function of y, remember, then you could do everything in terms of y. Um, so that is a topic on the exam. But here, we're going to use it in kind of this context of finding the surface area. So first, let's find, we need to find f prime. We need to find uh, that derivative of our function. So if f of x is 1 over x, that means f prime is going to be negative x to the negative 2, or negative 1 over x squared. So now I'm ready to plug everything in. Keep in mind that in this setup, r is the function. We, it's the same function we use for our volume. So here we go. Our integral looks like this. Now, <laughs> um, let's see. Let's set it up as a limit. The limit as b approaches infinity. And I'm going to pull the 2 pi out. And I'm going to have x times that square root of 1 plus negative 1 over x squared squared dx. All right, now. This one, um, to try to evaluate this uh, and, and work out this integral would take a lot, right? There it is, all in all of its glory. It would take a lot to try to kind of figure this out. Oops, that should be a 1 over x. Um, so rather than try to evaluate this by hand, you know, there's not a good u substitution I could do here, and it would just get complicated. So remember, the question on our mind is not what does it converge to, but does it converge? So if the volume is countable, if the volume converges, does that mean that the surface area also must? So we're going to try something. We're actually going to compare. We're going to do uh, the comparison test for this. And we're going to answer the question, does the integral converge? Now, when we do the comparison test, remember the whole idea here is that if I have my function that is kind of going like this, right? So this is mine. I either want to pick one that is below it that will diverge or I want to pick one above it that will converge. Because the idea is if I can pick a function either above or below that will always remain above or below, um, then I can show either convergence or divergence. But I have to be really careful about this. So what I want to do is I'm going to compare it to 1 over x. And here's why. I know that whatever I choose to plug into this numerator, 1 over x, or 1 over, or sorry, 1 plus 1 over x plus 4, whatever I plug in for x, remember x x is greater than 1, x will be positive values. So as I plug these numbers in, this will stay bigger than the square root of 1 because it's going to be 1 plus something, right? So it will always stay bigger than 1. Um, so what I can say here is that this function, mine, 1 plus 1 over x to the fourth over x, will be bigger, greater than or equal to 1 over x. So now I need to show that this 1 over x, that's like saying that this is my green function. I've just chosen one that's underneath, so I need this to diverge. Because then what I can do is I can show that my surface area will also diverge. So let's show that this diverges. And I actually, I already know that this diverges because this was one of the first ones that we did as an improper integral. So let's, let's just demonstrate that right now. From 1 to b, the limit as b approaches infinity of 1 over x dx is going to be the limit <coughs> excuse me oh tried to pause it and cut it out but i guess it didn't happen it happens all right so here we go the limit as b approaches infinity we'll have the natural log of b which we don't need those bars minus the natural log of one oh look it diverges so we've just shown that we have this divergent series, and it's going to basically push up because it, it's positive also. X is between 1 and, and infinity, so they have to be above the x-axis. 
They have to be positive values that you get when they both are. You have to show that, you know, as you set it up, hey, one plus something is always going to be bigger than just one. So that makes sense. You're making this argument. So by comparison, we have now shown that no matter what happens, this integral up here will always, always diverge because as b is, you know, infinite. So by comparison, here's what we write. We have to, you know, anytime we do the comparison test, we have to say a couple of things. So number one, we have to state an inequality saying that, you know, these are going to be above zero and then also which one is bigger. So you have to state that. Then you have to be really careful and make sure that your argument holds water and that if you're, you're picking one that's below your function, like I did up here, this green, you then need to show that it diverges. If you pick one above, you need to show that it converges down. So we've shown that it, and then number three, by comparison, we know that this integral, 2 pi, and then uh, 1 to infinity, 1 plus 1 over x to the fourth over x dx diverges. So the nice thing is we couldn't find the area even if we wanted to. Even if we knew how to do that integral, we couldn't do it. So what we've just shown is that Gabriel's horn is this really cool scenario where the volume actually works out, and the volume is a finite thing. It's a countable thing, but the surface area is infinite. So you have an infinite area enclosing a finite volume. So it's pretty cool, pretty pretty wild to think about. Um, and here's kind of the information if you want to deposit here and look. But, you know, this is not something that I, you'd ever be asked to do on an exam or anything like that. It's just one of those fun applications um, that, you know, once you get comfortable with the math, you can start exploring. So remember, topics in this video that are required are, you know, finding the volume and doing that integration by revolving. That would be a topic that you might see, and that's fair game. And then, you know, length of curve is another um, topic that's also on your exam. But in terms of surface area, that is not a topic that we need to cover. It's just kind of a fun little exploration to see, hey, infinite wrapper enclosing a finite space. So keep at it, keep practicing, do your homework, ask lots of questions, and never be afraid to make mistakes because that's when we learn the most. Keep at it. You've got it. You can do this.